tonight to propose a change to rating system in the Waipa. Festival of Football comes to Hamilton and the Waikato Show is on this weekend. Kia ora and good evening. Welcome to Central News on TV Central for Tuesday the 7th of April. I'm Amanda Harper. In today's news, at the age of 16, Taylor Moffat is one of the youngest members of the Scholars Pro Musica Chamber Choir, but that certainly doesn't faze him. In fact, he's relishing the opportunity to perform with a hugely regarded choir and to be rubbing shoulders with singers who have decades of experience under their belts. This year, the Papamoa College student won a scholarship with Chamber Choir, who performs choral period works with a particular focus on the Baroque period. For his scholarship, Taylor receives regular vocal tuition, full membership to the choir and $1,000 to put into his back pocket. Taylor says he loves it and he can feel his musical abilities improving quickly and already. Learning Area Music Coordinator Katrina Wickham says he was really thrown in the deep end on his first day. Farmers and other landowners in the Waipa River catchment are being encouraged to attend a field day to hear ideas for managing their properties in an environmentally sustainable way. Information on sources of funding to support environmental initiatives will also be available at the event hosted by the Waikato Regional Council and Dairy NZ. The Kani Funny Far Stream at Catchment Field Day will be at the property of Dennis and Felicity Ayler's, who have worked with industry body Dairy NZ to develop an environment-focused sustainable milk plan and also identified work that can qualify for Council and Waikato River Authority funding. Topics to be covered at the field day include farm planning, planting beside waterways, aquatic life, council river management and land stabilisation. Council Sustainable Agricultural Advisor John Vosper says reducing soil loss is particularly important in the Waipa catchment as this contributes to a high sediment load in streams and the Waipa River. He says the sediment reduces water clarity and can harm aquatic life. The Waipa River's major issue is poor clarity caused by sediment and is also the biggest contributor of sediment for the lower Waikato River. The field day at the Ayla's Farm will be on Tuesday the 21st of April. Contact the Regional Council for more information. A Waipa District Council are proposing a change to their rating system in order to balance out rate payments, payments between property owners. Mayor Jim Milcrease says there is a situation in Waipa where owners of multiple dwellings on a single property are paying the same amount as a property owner with only one dwelling. He says that they are trying to balance this out. So we're trying to balance that out by charging on a... Uh, uh a usable part of the property. So for every unit they will be charged a, a fixed charge rather than just one per property. So there's going to be some quite major changes uh, for those properties with multiple um, dwellings on or multiple businesses on the same title. Jim says this is outlined in the long-term plan consultation document and he urges people who will be affected by these changes to read and submit feedback. The rest of the interview with the Waipa District Mayor will air later on in today's show. Avanti Drome to hold New Zealand's very first track cycling World Cup event in December this year, just months before the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. The event will welcome over a thousand competitors, team staff and supporters from over 40 countries to the Waikato region. Avanti Drome CEO Jeff Baum says events are a key part of the National Cycling Centre of Excellence concept. One of the requirements of the government and Cycling NZ was that the facility would be capable of hosting major international events. This event will be the largest track cycling ever to be held in New Zealand and adds to the growing list of major sporting events New Zealand is hosting and delivering. Baum says not only will this event have huge economic benefits for the region, it also gives locals the opportunity to see the world's best track cyclists compete in their hometown. Some of New Zealand football's biggest names are working together to remind fans that the FIFA Under-20 World Cup is little more than 50 days away. 
Organisers of the tournament are hosting a festival of football in Hamilton this Friday to draw attention to the eight cup games that will be staged at Waikato Stadium when the tournament gets underway on May the 30th. A highlight of the evening festival at Seddon Park on Friday will be an exhibition game between a team of former All Whites and a Waikato Bay of Plenty invitation side. And now for our region's weather. Hamilton, expect cloudy periods tomorrow with rain at times and northerly breezes, high of 23 and low of 16. Rest of the Waikato will be the same. Pairo at 23 high, 16 low. Matamata 21 and 17. Te Aumotu 23 high and 16 low. Tokoroa 20 and 17. And over in the Bay of Plenty, Tauranga, we rain at times with northwest breezes, high of 23 and overnight low of 19. Te Puki, a high of 21 and 18. And for the marine forecast, West Coast Raglan, northerly 20 knots, rising overnight on Thursday to a northwest 30 knots. High tide is at half past 12 in the afternoon. East Coast Bay of Plenty, northwest 15 knots, rising early Friday to 30 knots with rough sea. High tide is at 14 past 10 at night. Coming up in the show, the Waikato Show. Welcome back to Central News. Each year the public from around the region and Hamilton City join together to enjoy the new Waikato Show. Rachel Sutton talks to event organiser Karina Dooley to find out what we can expect from this year's show. Farmyard is such a cool space. Um, we've got coney coney pigs, we've got donkeys, we've got turkeys, we've got chickens, we've got ducks, we've got bunnies, everything, everything. Can you tell us about the live entertainment stage for this year? So there's a range of local acts, but we also have Waikato Idol, so people can register on our website and enter a singing competition. And then on Friday night, we've got Undercover, which is a dance party to time with the carnival. Yeah, cool stuff. And you have a certain life-size game. I do have a life-size game. We're going to do real-life foosball. Yeah, so we're going to set up a field. We'll have pipes. People can enter their teams through The Rock, because The Rock FM is running the competition for us. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Now another type of entertainment you have is a Victorian Games and Battle. That's what right. does this involve? So a ch the children's battle is all about paper swords and flower bombs and just groups of kids, old, young, just going at it. It's amazing. And for this year we can take advantage of a range of different talks on all topics. Yeah, so the Enviro Expo and the Lifestyle Expo share a hall and in that hall they'll be doing talks about bats and the Waikato worms for the garden and how to build a fence. You have the carnival on Friday night, what rides are there going to be? We have the carnival all weekend but we have late night on Friday and so they will have the, all the standard stuff, they'll have the dodgems, they'll have the carousel, they'll have the carnival games that you can play to win prizes, yep. The screen machine's always pretty popular, not for me but it's popular. <laughs> for tickets and information where do we go? So the information's all on our website, which is waikatoshow.co.nz. Tickets you can buy on the day. Just come down to the gate. Yeah, five dollars a person. Under fives are free. It's really affordable for families. You have some amazing food for us this year. What have we got? So we've got the hot dogs and the chips in the carnival space. We've got all of the amazing food in the cultural village, and we also have Stella Cafe, who's got a really amazing lineup of food as well. To yeah, for everyone. And what are some of the challenges that you face yourself as an event organiser as part of the Waikato show? Not challenges. I just really like the networking. I like connecting with all the different groups. I like the variety and I like the diversity. And in that, sometimes there's conflict, but most of the time it's amazing. Yeah, I really enjoy it. And how long has the show been running for now? We've, this is our fourth Waikato show. It's run by the Winter Show Association, which is over 100 years old, but we changed direction and this is the fourth one that we've done. Yeah, that's cool. It's on this weekend. Don't miss out on what's sure to be a great event. Up next, we have Waipa Mayor, who reveals to me the proposed rate changes for the Waipa District and who these changes might affect. 
not in terms of averages, but that's a very simplistic uh, answer. Council's looking at spending over the 10-year period uh, about a billion dollars. It's, um, it's very close to that, $970 million over that 10-year period. So uh, significant increases in, um, uh, well, significant expenditure. And of that, um, we, we will be needing to generate about another, uh, about $93 million worth of loans uh, to pay for those those capital works, so they ha obviously have to be paid for. Um, but in effect, uh, all of the loans, or a large proportion of the loans that are paid for for uh, sewerage and water treatment upgrades, for example, are funded by depreciation and they're already factored in. So despite the fact that we will be spending in the order of a billion dollars, as I say, over the next 10 years, that is working out to be an average rate increase of about 2.3% per annum. So that's well within, um, I suppose, a, an acceptable level, an affordable level of increase. So the 2.3%, the uh, as I say, is an average. It impacts different people in, in different ways. So certainly there will be some people are getting higher than that, but others will obviously get less. Mm -hmm. Now I understand the Waipa District Council is proposing some changes to the rating system. Yeah. What are these changes? Well, that's all, all part of it, and I suppose that's the area where it's quite um, complicated, but effectively uh, where our rates are um, calculated partly on capital value and partly on fixed charges, we have a situation in, in Waipa where um, a, num a number of properties where there are multiple units on them, whether that's residential units, blocks of flats, um, retirement complexes, uh, and say farms with um, three or four houses on them, or commercial properties, are only paying a fixed charge of $1,100. And that's the same as a residential property. Now, if you have a multiple uh, unit uh, development uh, and say three flats on a section, uh, they would only be paying $360 in round figures f um, per unit and getting the same services as people living on, on their own in a, in a property next door, probably earning the same amount of uh, income. So we're trying to balance that out by charging on a uh, uh, a usable part of the property. So for every unit they will be charged a, a fixed charge rather than just one per property. So there's going to be some quite major changes uh, for those properties with multiple um, dwellings on or multiple businesses on the same title. And, and the point that we'd really like to make is for anybody in that situation they really need to go to our website and have a look what how, how it's going to impact them and come back with some comments through the uh, through the consultation process because we need to hear from them and just see what the impact is. Um, we've done quite a lot of work um, trying to find all of those um, anomalies, I suppose, and going out and talking to people prior to the uh, plan being developed. But there's obviously people that we we have missed, and we'd certainly like to hear from everybody. If you will be affected by these changes, let the council know what you think by heading to their website, wipardc.gov.nz. Stay with us for more stories after the break. Welcome back to Central News. Glaucoma is the number one preventable cause of blindness in New Zealand. Blindness from glaucoma can be prevented by early detection. Rachel Sutton chats to Dr Sam Kane from Glaucoma New Zealand about the risks and preventions that you can take. Uh, we focus on a few main areas. Uh, pretty key for us is public awareness of glaucoma, uh, support for people with glaucoma. Uh, we also uh, facilitate research into glaucoma in New Zealand and we have a fairly active professional uh, development program. How long has the organisation been running for? It, we, the organisation was started in 2002 so we've been going for yeah, over a decade now. What are your main objectives as an organisation? We have really one main objective. We want to eliminate blindness from glaucoma in New Zealand. It's a pretty ambitious goal, but uh, you've got to shoot for the stars, I think. Do you have a key message? The main thing we want to get across to the general public is the importance of getting checked. 
uh, if you see your optometrist or your ophthalmologist and just get a check for glaucoma because early detection is the, and treatment is the best way of preventing blindness. And what do we do to prevent us from getting glaucoma? Well for most people there's nothing you can do to prevent the glaucoma itself but you can prevent all the problems of glaucoma which is the blindness. There are a few types of glaucoma where prevention is possible. Uh, if you've had a nasty injury to your eye uh, then you could have avoided that by wearing uh, eye protection. Uh, there is a small number of people who can have a laser procedure to prevent a certain type of glaucoma. But for everyone else, and it's the vast majority of people with glaucoma, the prevention is not uh, at the moment possible. So early detection and treatment is what we're after. And what can we do to prevent us from getting glaucoma? A family history is a really important risk factor. Uh, glaucoma is common in the population anyway, but if you have a, a family member or more than one family member who have had glaucoma or have glaucoma, then your risk goes up a lot. Are we at higher risk if we are long or short-sighted? So there, if you're very short-sighted or very long-sighted, then your risk does go up. For most people who have a relatively normal glasses prescription, their risk doesn't change appreciably, but certainly at the extremes it does, and so those people need to be checked uh, more often and from an earlier age. What are the symptoms? Well, there are no real symptoms for most glaucoma. There's a few small subtypes of glaucoma which will give you pain, uh, but mostly uh, glaucoma is a silent uh, disease. It takes away your peripheral vision without you even being aware of it. So if you're not treated, you by the time you become aware of the vision loss, you've lost almost all of your vision. And how often should we be going for eye examinations for glaucoma? We would suggest that for most people, you get your first uh, check by the age of 45 uh, with your optometrist or ophthalmologist, and then about every five years after that. Now that changes if you have a, a, a risk uh, a increase. So if you have a family member, if you've had an eye injury, if you're one of those people we talked about that have very long or very short sight, then you should start your checks earlier and your uh, optometrist or ophthalmologist will want to check you more frequently. But as a general rule, by age 45 and then every five years after that. You have a professional program that you offer. Can you tell us about that? So that's uh, an effort to uh, help with the diagnosis and management of glaucoma in the community because there's a lot of uh, people who are involved with it, uh, particularly our optometry colleagues. Uh, and so we offer a fairly comprehensive uh, educational program uh, which is accessed online and can be uh, seen through, the, through our website. For more information on glaucoma and to donate, head to glaucoma.org.nz. In our last story for the night, Butterflies of the Night is a theatrical extravaganza, bringing to life exquisite vintage garments and their stories from the past. Reporter Rachel Sutton chats to producer and creative director Judith Bow ahead of the show. As a child, I was always theatrical. I put theatre into everything that I did, uh, naturally. And I had a musical background and I used to put on skits and plays, even at a sports event. I'd, you'd, I'd, I'd put some theatre into it. And this followed on when I was school teaching. And the, then I, I had a little rest from all of this when I joined my husband in, in, in the industrial sector for our business. And but uh, at the age of 40, I guess, and. Um, Probably a little bit older, but in 2005 I was the first model out in the Tarnish Rocks and Divas show. And in those days um, that show uh, called upon local women and to supply their vintage clothing. And I'd always collected vintage clothing. I bought my first vintage hat when I was 11, my first pair of gloves when I was 14 and was addicted from there on in. So I have, you know, for, for all of my life I've collected treasures. And so... After my modelling in Tarnished Frocks and Divas, I became the creative director and costume director and script writer, along with my husband also, who helps me write scripts. And uh, from there on, I decided to create my own show, Butterflies of the Night. So because of the encouragement that I received in my work with Tarnished Frocks and Divas, I felt that I wanted to premiere it here in um, Tauranga, 
before taking it on the on the to other other centres and regions. Now you've formed a company called Threads and Theatre. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Fabulous Threads and Theatre personifies what I'm doing here, which is integrating fabulous threads like this beautiful 1920s beading um, with theatre. Butterflies of the Night will be held April 15th to the 18th at Classic Flyers in Mount Monganui. For more information and to purchase tickets, head online to butterfliesofthenight.com. That is it from me tonight. Thank you for watching Central News. I trust that everybody had an excellent break over the weekend. Now, if you want to catch up with everything on demand, we post everything on our website, tvcentral.co.nz, and also through our Facebook. Don't forget to like us. If you may have a story lead for us, email news at tvcentral.co.nz. I will be back on screens tomorrow night with more stories from the Waikato and the Bay of Plenty. My name is Amanda Harper. Have a good night. Paul Marie. This has been an Alpha Media production, a division of Television Media Group. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.